So in this video, we're gonna look at temporary supplies to building sites. How do we normally overcome this problem, Gordon? Okay, on a big site, easy, specialists in there, proper power distribution. Smaller building sites, it can be anything really. And I've seen examples from a, you know, old sockets recycled, old consumer nailed to a door, normally ends up in some sort of temporary shed type structure covered in mud. Yeah, it can be, can be anything really. We posed this question to Luden, and we've looked at in previous videos, and I recommend you check them out. We've looked at their top tur range, and Joe describes this as the Lego of the electrical industry because of the amount of variance that you can have built by Luden. However, we posed the question to them, could they come up with a board suitable as a temporary supply? What did they come up with, Gordon? Well, Gary, I, I, I thought about this for a while, and what, what did I do? So I drew up a prototype. Here it is. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It looks like it's four sockets in a rectangular shape. Is that what you sent them? That's what I sent them. I said a few of the features they could put in there. And lo and behold, this came back. So this is a prototype of a temporary supply board for a single phase installation. We're probably thinking this is going to be on a domestic dwelling. Maybe it's being uh, completely refurbished. Maybe it's a knockdown rebuild, etc. Is that what we're thinking? Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah. so or something. It's going to get. It's going to be exposed. It's going to get the environment. Yeah, all sorts thrown at it. Yeah, something you can quickly put in. And obviously, we had the debate about the 110 volt issue. That was the first thing. Now. In Italy, Luden make loads of standard configurations that go to building sites, they come with stainless steel frames, right, okay. but it only appears to be the UK, we're singled out again where we use the 110 volt supply. However, we're likely to, on a smaller installation, have a transformer and be plugging it into a 230 volt socket outlet anyhow, yeah. or in real terms, perhaps we're plugging in the charging units for our battery tools, which we're using on site, maybe some temporary lighting, etc. Yeah, so we ditched in this, the, the 110 volt we're left out. Yeah, this is a place to plug in the kettle, plug in your own 110 volt transformer, you don't accept responsibility for anyone else's, or yeah, those banks of charges that everyone needs. So let's go through some of these wonderful features that are gonna be incorporated in this top tier range, one that we've given the prototype for, IP ratings, etc. Yeah, let's have, a, let's have a closer look at some of the details. So let's start off with that important IP rating. What's the IP rating of the enclosure? Okay, so this is IP66, Gary. Okay. So if I've forgotten from your time in the lab, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. But there's IP66, uh, so that's jets of water from all directions, clouds of dust from the desert. So yeah, chances of getting water in here are pretty slim. Uh, one thing I really love about the Luden top tier range is this mechanism. Now I've probably gone on about it a bit too much, but let's just have a look, just to remind ourselves. Nice smooth action. I mean, look at that. The problem with a lot of these enclosures is that you know you try and uh, once this, once these covers are on and that the seal has gripped, the chances of opening it again incredibly slim. You end up wrenching the thing off the wall. But this is just yeah, lovely. And once we've opened it, you can see the gasket in here already molded in, which is providing that IP rating of this enclosure against this here. So that's really nice. The overcurrent protection devices, they're RCBOs. They're rated at 30 milliamps and they're also um, A-type RCDs, which we like, Gordon. Yeah, and let's split that into two circuits. So you can have one for the plumbers, one for the electricians, or the okay. plasterers. So you can get some arguments sorted on site. You know, someone can have a dedicated circuit. Also, when it's energized, this uh, little LED on the end, that will illuminate to tell you that the power supply is present, Gordon. Yeah, I just thought that was a useful function to throw in there. You know, it was, okay, it was a bit like kids in a sweet shop once we were let loose on the, on the top tier range. So we had to keep a, keep a bit of a lid on it as to what we do and don't include. Okay, and the socket outlets themselves, again, I like the fact once we've opened that up, again, we can see that gasket seal here again, molded in, but it automatically closes and returns your IP rating. Yeah, so a bit of a debate there, really. So we could have, we've gone with those ones. So yeah, when it's closed, it's IP66, but Luden do another fantastic mechanism. And I'll just show this one here, get ready for this. Look yeah, at that. It's lovely, isn't it? Now, uh, obviously, on this one, you can put a plug in, and close, close it, it up, up, and keep the IP rating. Now, OK, there's the debate, really, because obviously, that's IP66. Um, but two things. Do yeah. people 
Yeah, remember to close it. Remember to close them. Would they wrench that off? And I don't think many chargers themselves are IP66. Right, okay, yeah. And obviously we've got the, the depth there, obviously. We've got a certain size of plug that can go into there. Obviously we're, we're happy with these ones when these ones open up to plug in. It's obviously then exposed, etc. But there's, there's, that was the choice, wasn't it? We had a couple of couple of variants that we could have gone with. It, hence, it's a prototype, and this is where we want people's feedback, isn't it? As you're watching this video, if there's something you think could be added to this, then please leave that in the comments below. Yeah. We've got a set of towels at the top, and we've got some gubbins on the inside to have a look at. Probably you wouldn't get in the inside very often, Gordon, would you? Yeah, just one more thing, Gary, before we move on. External fixing tabs. Right. Okay. Now the the, the top tail range has keyhole fixings on the back. But I thought, obviously, if you're going to fix this to a bit of plywood and the screw fixings hidden behind it, whoever yeah. comes along at the end of the day will just try and wrench it off the wall or open the box to try and take it off. That's a really good idea. I never saw it on your little cardboard drawing earlier on, but obviously it must have been there. Yeah, I must have missed that. So let's have a look inside one of these because I think the actual quality in these Luden products is obviously on the outside where we can see, but there's a lot of quality going on the inside, Gordon. So if I know Luden, the quality is going to continue throughout the enclosure. Let's open it up and have a look inside okay. it. Okay, not that you'd actually have to do that because this is all pre-wired, Gary. So what you're saying there is the, the towers coming in the top are already connected in and all we've got to do is obviously make that connection to a single phase supply and never go inside the enclosure. Yeah, and these are even flexi tails. So a, a normal metre tail that you'd buy off the shelf at the wholesalers may have seven cores in. This is the 19 core van, so a little bit more flexibility, a little bit easier to work with. If you haven't seen our video on that, check out the eye above our head and you'll find all about flexi tails. Another thing that fans of eFix are going to notice and we're going to get really excited now because we love a feral at eFix and this is like feral city for us including one here with multiple connections in for our circuit protective conductors here as well Gordon. Oh no I've never seen yeah four cables into a twin feral. Mm, there's something to explore that's good uh, you notice there's a, there's a six amp circuit breaker in there and that's just to power this indicator light but somebody did say in the comments to the last one and that's where we stole the idea for a sight board from that possibly yeah you could have a, a dedicated lighting circuit in here as well if it's probably a larger site with some temporary lighting that makes sense as well we've got the gasket again for that ip66 rating we've got this lovely loom so we've got a lovely wiring loom to our four socket outlets on the front as well yeah, and this hinge mechanism as well. The thing about these enclosures is once you've opened them, it's not flapping around in the breeze. There's a good, good solid hinge mechanism. So we can see the quality continues throughout the enclosure. So thanks to the feedback and comments you made on Joe's video on the top tier range, Luden have gone away and constructed this site board. However, it came from your concept drawing. Let's have another look, Gordon. Fantastic. Let's have a look at the other side. Yeah, it appears to have your footprint on it, Gary. Okay, no clever wiring, looms or ferrules there, is there, Gordon? Well, I'm a concept person, Gary, but if you would like to see this concept turned into a production unit as a standard available to you, put some comments in below. You may have some ideas to add to it, and we'll see if we can incorporate this design and bring it to life.